Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Well, winter's closing fast on the forest wilderness, and the rangers are making their last inspection of the wildlife and forest conditions before the Lord puts a clean white blanket of snow over the woodlands. Today we find Bill and Ranger Tom on their way home and well on the last lap before they turn toward Knotty Pine and rest. And before you know it, they'll be into the story, The Hermit. Easy, big boy. Easy now. I know you got lots of energy, but we still got quite a ways to go. Hey, Bill, wait up. Close to him. Whoa there, big fella. Oh, Maud, old girl. Come on, take it easy now. What's the matter, Tom? Oh, Maud's getting tired. Hasn't got the oomph that Storm has. <laughs> uh, sometimes I think Storm has too much vim and vigor. More than he knows what to do with. Not only that, he's five years younger than Maud. Now we better rest the horses here. Yeah, this sure is rough country. Bill, what say we dismount and walk a bit, eh? I'd like to stretch my legs. Okay. I don't know why they can't make saddles out of foam rubber. Oh, this leather gets as hard as concrete after a day's riding. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> say, Bill, hmm? wonder who's down in that old line shack. There's smoke coming out of the chimney. Hmm. I don't know. It's an abandoned shack. Let's take a look when Maud gets rested a little. That shack hasn't been lived in for years. Well, guess Whoa, whoever's in there doesn't want much company. He must have heard us. Strange he didn't come to the door. Yeah. Of course, there could be something wrong. Could be. Take a look, huh? Bill, somebody just looked out the window. Yeah. Something funny here, all right. I tried to dismount. You take Storm and get away. I'm going to find out what's going on. Bill, I think the door's opening a little. Never mind getting off that horse, Ranger. The man's got a right to live alone and in peace in his own house. Now get out of here before I start throwing some lead. He's got a gun on us, Bill. All right, mister. Don't mean any harm. Just trying to be neighborly, that's all. See you some other time. Never mind. Just keep away from here if you want to stay healthy. Now get. All right. So long. Let's go, Tom, before the fireworks start. He isn't joking. Right. Come on, Storm. Let's go, boy. Come on. Come on. Pleasant surprise find you here. Yeah. Hi. Oh, hello, Ralph. Hello, gentlemen. Just thought I'd drop by and see how you were before winter sets in. Nothing important, just uh, taking a look around, that's all. Uh, anything out of order, sir? Not a thing, Bill. Everything looks in fine shape in accord with the best traditions of the Forest Service. Thank you, sir. We certainly want to keep them that way. Yeah. If we meet a couple more characters like the one we met this morning, I'm afraid our tradition will be shot full of holes. And us rangers, too. What are you talking about, Tom? Oh, yeah, what goes here? <laughs> what Tom means is we were threatened with the business end of a 30-30 when we got too close to an old line shack up Shady River way. Well, he wasn't just making chin music. Believe me, he'd have put daylight through us if we'd ever tried to get off our horses. <laughs> I believe you're right. That old prospector sure wanted to be left alone. What prospector, Bill? Uh, who drew a bead on you two? Come on, I'm curious. Oh, uh, you two talk like dog chasing tail. Go round and round and get nowhere. <laughs> well, the truth is, we stumbled onto some ornery old fellow living in an abandoned line shack. 
haven't the least idea who he is or where he came from. I do. Huh? Ralph. Well, Why, who is it, Ralph? Come and tell us. Well, Colonel Landers told me uh, his story, and it's one of the most interesting ones I've heard. Yeah? What's his name? Name is Dr. William T. Warburton. Doctor. Dr. Why, Warburton. Uh, a doctor? That ornery old fella, a doctor? You mean a real M.D.? Not only an M.D., but with a whole string of other degrees as well. Well, what's well, that? Oh, right. Oh, that? oh, but he doesn't talk like an educated well, man. His right. speech was rough. Boy, I'll say it was. Yes, that's part of the mask. Doesn't want to be discovered. Well, this is very interesting, Ralph. You mind telling us his story? Yeah, I think it'd be a sad one. Maybe much trouble to make men come to wilderness to hide. You've made a shrewd observation, Grey Wolf. The story goes back about two years ago into the operating room of a large hospital in the east. Dr. Warburton was about to perform a critical brain operation, which was not unusual, except that the patient was a very dear friend of the doctor's. In fact, the best friend he'd ever had. The patient is completely under, Doctor. Very well, nurse. Pulse. Uh, 73. Respiration. 17. Dermatome. Yes, sir. Cole, when are you going to learn how to put an instrument into the surgeon's hand? I want to feel the handle of that knife sting my palm from now on, understand? Yes, doctor. Good. Tissue. How's that, sir? Oh, you're a good intern, Cole. Hemostat. Retractor. Sponge. Hemostat. Forceps. Doctor, how much longer? One hour. You can have a relief nurse take over if you're tiring. Clear that field, Cole. Yes, sir. Very little blood. Prepare 30-day chromic sutures. Now, second phase. Yes, sir. Doctor, the patient's beginning to show the strain of long anesthesia. Hmm. A cold, 10 cc's of adrenaline. Quickly. Right here, doctor. Inject. Hurry, doctor. Pulse and respiration are failing. Yes, nurse, yes. Knife. Knife, someone... Never mind, I'll get it. Doctor, the patient. What? Cole, 20 cc's at once. Here's a syringe, doctor. I've got it. <laughs> doctor Warburton. Cole, I've... I failed. I. I killed my best friend. That was the beginning of the end of a wonderful career in surgery. Yeah, I can see what you mean, Ralph. But why? Sounds like simple heart failure to me. The heart just wasn't strong enough to stand the long strain of anesthesia. But you see, Bill, Dr. Warburton blamed himself for subjecting his friend to that strain. But such things, who can know? Oh, I not think he was to blame. I'm sure it was not his fault in, in any way. Yes, and that was the opinion of all the doctors in the hospital. In fact, several weeks later, the chief of staff called on Dr. Warburton at his home and tried to reason with him found the doctor in a state of nervous exhaustion and under the influence of liquor. Bert, you've got to stop blaming yourself for this. I can't. The autopsy shows you didn't kill him. The heart just stopped, that's all. How could you know? Every test gave evidence that his heart would stand up under the strain. That's what you say. You're just trying to comfort me. It was poor judgment on my part, I tell you. Can't you understand? I made a mistake. It was my fault, Steve. I'm paying for it. Don't be absurd, Bert. Now, look, listen to reason. I've been asked to come here and invite you back to the staff. Back? What do you mean? Can't you understand? A human life isn't like a machine. Make an error on a machine. You buy a new part and fix it good as new. I can't do that for Jim. He's gone. And I'm through for good. When you sober up, you'll come to your senses. Then get back to work. You've got a whole life ahead of you. And we need you. The medical profession needs you. Need me? Need a failure? 
Don't kid me. Get out of here and leave me alone. All right. I'll be back when you're when you're not so drunk. Do you have to rub it in? Now get out of here. Get out. Too bad. It's obvious that he never did go back. No, he never returned to practice. Fled out here to the West, has been living like a hermit ever since. Roaming the country as a prospector most of the time. And I guess he's moved into the old line shack for the winter. Come spring, he'll move on, I guess. Oh, not too bad he takes this attitude. Everybody make mistake or two in lifetime. Even doctor. But think what good they do. That's right. And there's this. The higher up in life you get and the more responsibilities you take on, the more serious are your mistakes. Well, it's been nice talking with you fellas, but uh, I've got to move along. Well, it's good to see you, Ralph. Wish you could drop by more often. I uh, wish I could too, but well, I have enough to keep me busy down in my own district. You know, I'd like to go out and visit that old prospector one of these days just to talk to him. Better be careful, Bill. He's become very proficient with the business end of his rifle. And he evidently doesn't want to be bothered by anybody. You wait here, Storm, and behave yourself like a good fella. I'll see if I can't talk to that ornery old doctor in the cabin over there. <laughs> Storm, you act like you understand every word I say. Uh-oh. I can see the business end of a 30-30 looking me square between the eyes. I just keep on walking as though I didn't see it. <laughs> Hold up there, Ranger. You ain't welcome here. You ain't invited, see? Uh, guess not, by the looks of things. Hold up there, old-timer. There's nothing wrong. I just want to talk with you, that's all. I'm not even armed, as you can see. Well, uh, I suppose there isn't, uh, ain't any harm in talking. And you're not, uh, he ain't carrying a gun. And... All right, Ranger, come on in. But no funny business, or I'll make you look like a hunk of Swiss cheese. No, you aren't, uh, ain't such a, a bad young fella after all. Have a chair. Uh, I ain't, uh, I am, ain't, aren't uh, used to talking with anybody for uh, quite a spell. I... Ain't much for associating with people, you know. <clears throat> yes, I gathered as much from the reception I got. <laughs> well, uh, you know how it is. Uh, I don't like nobody... Crying into my business. Oh, I know what you mean, Doctor. Uh, as I was saying... Uh, doctor! Oh, I'm sorry, I guess that kind of slipped out. And then you know who I am. And you know my secret. Now listen to me. You get out of this shack, do you hear? Get out. And never let me see you again. Doctor, just a minute, please. Believe me, not I... Not a minute, not even a second. Get out of this cabin before I put a bullet through you. All right, if that's the way you want it. I only want to help you. You'll help me by leaving me alone. You understand? Leave me alone. Well, Bill, did you get to talk to that old fellow? <laughs> About two dozen words and most of that over the muzzle of a rifle. Oh, what a mistake it is to try to run from the realities of life. Uh, that one thing no one can run from, Bill. oneself. It's too bad, Grey Wolf, especially in the case of Dr. Warburton. Because medical science needs him, and sick people need him even worse. Incidentally, Tom, he's not an old man, even though he looks like one. Hey, wait a minute. Listen. <laughs> Stumpy, what's the matter? You got trouble. Trouble enough, you fellas. 
There's a mountain climber laying on a ledge way up on the side of Old Balding. He's got a busted head. Well, why don't they bring him down? Well, you got to have experience and equipment to do this job. Must have thought he was a human mountain sheep or something. Somebody's got to get him off of there. Well, you come to the right place, Dumpy. We do it. How? Sounds like it's going to be tough. Tough or not, let's not stand around and talk. Tom, you get a doctor from the hospital and bring him here. We'll leave instructions just where we're going. Stumpy, Grey Wolf, let's go. We're going to climb old Baldy and get that man down if it's the last thing we ever do. Uh, I notice rest of climbers pretty upset over accident, Bill. I can imagine. This fellow's rope must have been severed on the sharp ledge. Stumpy, you stay here. Keep our rope straightened out. And keep the floodlight on that ledge. Uh, keep rope straight. Most important when we climb. Yeah, don't worry none about that, sonny. I'll keep them straight, all right. I've climbed more mountains than there is on the map of the United States. Now, you fellas, be careful. I sure wish I had a skyhook. It would be easier. Here he is. He got cold as ice cube. Maybe you better hurry and lower him. About 200 feet down. I think you're pretty close to right, Gray Wolf. You take a look at our injured friend while I signal Stumpy to drop the small line. Rig the harness so we can lower him as soon as we get the heavy rope up here. Okay, Bill. Stumpy! Watch the line! Stumpy! Watch the line! I'm lowering the small rope, Grey Wolf. Soon Stumpy ties down the heavy rope, gets back up here. We can lower the injured fellow off this ledge. Oh, not fine, Mill. I got harness on him. Tom should have Naughty Pine Doctor waiting for us when we get down. Well, Doc, what do you think? Pretty bad, huh? Yes, yes. I, I'm afraid he's suffered a severe injury to the brain. He's in critical condition. I'm afraid he's done for unless the right operation is performed. Can't you do it, Doctor? No, no. We dare to undertake the delicate surgery needed in this case. In fact, there are only two men in the country who are proficient enough in the Warburton technique. And they're way across the ocean now on vacation. Warburton technique? Why, I... Oh! Stumpy, can't you stand on your own two feet? Uh, sorry, Sonny, I'm just an old man, you know, and uh, my foot slipped. Uh, what were you going to say about the Warburton technique? Uh, hey, where's Bill? He gone, uh, just like that. Oh, say, that's right. Uh, where did he go and why? He was standing here uh, and... He'll be back, Doc, don't worry. Uh, I better see what you can do for this poor fellow here. Yes, yes, uh, he can certainly make the last minutes of his life a bit easier for him. I'm surprised that Bill's running out on us. I wonder... Don't what... worry. He'll be back. <laughs> well, looks like somebody's snooping around again outside. This 30-30 is going to talk business this time. I'm getting sick and tired. Now... We'll find out who's out there. Hold it right there, Doctor. And don't turn around if you want to stay alive. So, you're back again, Ranger. And you think you've got the drop on me. I'd just like to get one crack at you with this rifle I'm and... not joking, Doctor. I said don't turn around. Drop that gun, now. All right. Since you seem to be in command right now... Step back three steps and turn around. Oh, you haven't got a gun at all. I'll Don't try you. to get to that gun. You'll never make it. Now, inside. 
I want to talk to you, Dr. Warburton. There's not a minute to waste. No, 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 I can't and I won't operate on this man. And that's final. You've got to, doctor. You have no choice. Don't I? Who's going to force me to do something I don't want to do? Listen, doctor. You took an oath to serve human need whenever and wherever needed at all times of the day or night, didn't you? Yes, I did. But that's all in the past. I'm not a doctor anymore. Can't you get that through your thick head? I'm not bound. Doctor, there's only one thought that's going through my thick head. And that is that here you stand arguing with me while a man's life is ebbing away. Don't you care? In your hands and in your mind is the power to save this man's life. And you refuse to do it. Dr. William Warburton, with all that ability at your command, you're a murderer. And you'll stand charged as such before God and before your fellow man. If you don't do what you can, don't you understand? The death of your friend was a tragic one, Doctor. I know, but it was only a mistake. Can't you see that? An error in judgment that any doctor in the world might have made. Yes, I... I can see that. But now, you're deliberately letting a man die. And insofar as you do, you are guilty of this man's death. Aren't you? I... I don't know. I haven't practiced in years. I, I'm afraid. But you could take a look at the man. That's the least you could do. You could tell the doctor from Naughty Pine what to do to save the man's life... Or have you forgotten all you knew? You know you haven't. No more than I could forget how to swim or write my name. All right. I'll go take a look at this man. But I won't. I can't touch a knife. All right. I'll accept that for now, Doctor. Come on. We'll ride double on Storm. This man you brought, Bill, he certainly a doctor, seems to know his stuff. He is a doctor, and a good one. One of the best in the United States. Uh, I'll tell you more later. He seems to have finished his examination. What do you think, doctor? Is he going to die? Yes, I, I'm afraid there isn't much we can do for him, poor fellow. You have it wrong, doctor. There isn't much we can do for him, but there's a lot you can do for him. You can save his life. Can't you? See here, Bill, I, I don't get this. How can this man save his life? The patient needs brain surgery. Uh, unless... Yes, Doc. What were you going to say? Uh, never mind. If this man is a surgeon, whatever he needs will get my fullest cooperation. I have a complete emergency kit with me, including anesthesia. Thank you. Well, Doctor, what do you say? We haven't much time, you know. All right. Bill, get this man on the stretcher. Here, let me shift the body. Don't touch that head. Now, uh, uh, under with it. Yeah. Now, back again, back again. Easily. Good. Now, doctor, you get the equipment set up for the brain surgery. It'll be a crude operation, but I think... I know it'll work. Ready? Good. Instruments. Tourniquet bandage. Now, inject the sodium pentothal, doctor. Right. Knife, please, Bill. Here, sir. <laughs> Tom, reflect that mirror a few degrees more this way. <laughs> Fine. Now pray. Oh, God, help me to remember. Second knife, please. Yes, sir. How long will it take? I think about 15 minutes. This is only an emergency. If I can repair the damage temporarily, the man will live. 
He must have, please. Here. Now we just wait. We've brought him out of the anesthesia, and he should come out of the coma shortly. That is, if I haven't lost my skill. Let's trust God for full restoration of your powers, shall we, Doctor? Yes, Bill. Thank you. Uh, the hemorrhage in the brain has been stopped, excess blood removed, and the damaged area mended. Now there must be a reaction soon, or we've lost the battle. Five minutes, Doctor. How will we know when he comes out of it? He'll open his eyes for a moment, then fall asleep. Ten minutes, Doctor. Pulse is a bit weaker. I hope we weren't too late, Bill. But I'm a little afraid... How much longer do we have before we'll know, Doctor? Five minutes, and we'll know the answer. Five minutes are up. His pulse is dropping just a bit. I'm afraid... Doctor! His hands! He's moving them! Good. That's a hopeful sign. And his eyes are opening! You ain't seeing much, but they're open. Gentlemen, good news. Our patient will live. Well, gentlemen, I'd say the operation was a success. His pulse and respiration are weak, but steady. Before we move him, he'll need a transfusion, of course. Well, I'll gladly give blood, Dr. Warburton. And I'll do the same, if you can use the blood of a dried-up old fossil like me. Ain't much good, except just to keep the old pump going. <laughs> What's the matter, Doctor? <laughs> Nothing really, Bill. I, I just happened to think. That's the first time I've laughed since I ran away from the world. <laughs> Bill, do you think Dr. Warburton is really going back to practice medicine? I wish I knew, Tom. Right now, he's over at Naughty Pine Hospital checking on his patient. Dr. Warburton! Gentlemen, I, I've i come to say goodbye. You're going back? Bill, I'm taking a plane east within the hour and returning to my first love and very rightful place in life. Oh, doctor, that's wonderful. I'm glad to hear it. Oh, it's good to hear Thank that. you. And, and, and Bill, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you've done for me. You've made me understand that I can't run away from myself. And what's more important, that I can't run away from God. <laughs> Sort of gives you that satisfied feeling to know Dr. Warburton has returned to his true calling in life. Certainly true, boys and girls, that you, you can't run away from yourself any more than you can run away from God. Be sure to listen again next week at this same time for more adventure with Ranger Bell! <laughs>